Hi everybody, we're back in Venice this week to visit one of my favourite places in one of the most improbable locations. It's coming up next. So there are six regions in Venice, or Sesteri, those six fingers you see on the front of every gondola represent each one of those regions. We've got the Duzzo Giura to the south, immediately behind us. To the north there's Canareggio, in the east Castello, in the west Santa Croce and San Paolo. And we start with about a million other tourists right in the centre, in San Marco. There's certainly plenty to see and do in St Mark's Square, from a trip around the Doge's Palace to up the Campanale. There's a beautifully served but slightly expensive cup of coffee at Florian. Or just the endless selfie possibilities. Napoleon called St Mark's Square the drawing room of Europe. Stand here for long enough and anybody who was anybody would pass through it. But after a while even the selfie opportunities get a bit tiresome and all this wedding cake architecture makes you yearn for something a little bit more restrained. Well, fortunately, tucked away in the corner in the most unlikely of places amidst all this tourist mayhem is a little oasis of calm and restraint. This is the Olivetti showroom, commissioned in 1957 by Adriano Olivetti himself, and opened in 1958. Olivetti chose Venetian architect Carlo Scarpa to oversee the works. Scarpa had won the Olivetti Prize for Architecture in 1956, so there was a synergy, a history between the two men, and the architect had demonstrated his ability to work within existing historic structures, as if putting new clothes on an old building. The showroom or negozio space is long at 21 metres and skinny at only 5 metres wide and was originally divided into two rooms with two narrow staircases that led to a second floor and low mezzanine. Scarpa removed the dividing wall and opened up the space and took advantage of the height by putting balconies along both sides. Now this wasn't to be a showroom in the usual sense, it was less to do with sales and more of a business card, an exhibition space for Olivetti's design skills that the company was famous for, and that's reflected in the quality of the materials and where they're used. For example, the stairway to the balconies is striking, and at first glance it could be the polished concrete that's all the rage with architects today, but in fact the individual treads are Orisina, an Italian marble, and each is cleverly and discreetly supported both at one end and in the centre, so the staircase seems to float up to the first floor, both breaking up the showroom space and allowing a discreet staff cloakroom to be tucked away behind it. Saying with a ground level for now, the floor covering is a nod towards traditional Venetian terrazzo, interpreted here as a glass mosaic that changes in colour from red at the front through an off-white and into yellow at the rear. And the teak grating is used here to obscure the showroom's water entrance, where goods were unloaded from the supply boats from the canal immediately behind the building. Scarpa's designs were practical as well as pretty. The half column to the left here that continues up to the mezzanine actually hides the septic tank for the entire building, and the holes you can see in the floor at this end are drainage holes that connect with a complex series of pumps and pipes that help to deal with the aqua alta or high water flooding that St Mark's Square suffers from regularly. In fact, a couple of days after I visited and shot this video, Venice suffered the worst flooding since 1966, with St Mark's Square particularly badly hit. And you can see my take on some of that in the Aqua Alta videos on this channel. But despite this unprecedented flooding, whilst there was some damage to the negozio afterwards, it wasn't serious and the pumps worked perfectly to minimise the effects of the flood. Throughout the showroom, the walls are covered in Venetian stucco panels and separated by vertical fluorescent lights that run from floor to ceiling, the tubes hidden behind frosted glass covers. Upstairs, there is more Orisina marble on show and plenty of teak along the balconies, with some fine joinery detailing in the handrails. 
and Olivetti's products are displayed on rosewood shelves anchored to the floor by thin uprights so like the staircase they seem to float. There are plenty of examples of Olivetti's classic typewriters on display here like the Letterer 22 as well as many of the company's adding machines and office calculators. You don't have to be a typewriter nerd to admire the elegance of the designs, the simple curves of the bodywork, all remarkable in their day, and it's telling that the quality of the materials and the craftsmanship that's gone into the finishing of the fabric of the building doesn't overshadow the items on show. The upper floor landing at the front of the building, closest to St Mark's Square, has two windows that overlook the piazza, and these windows are covered with an oval grating, again in teak and rosewood. And whilst these sliding screens might suggest a Japanese influence, there's no denying that the choice of teak and rosewood, marble, stucco and mosaic, typical materials of Venetian craftsmen, roots Scarpa's negozio firmly in the Venetian tradition. The showroom was closed by Olivetti in 1997 and subsequently became a shop selling tourist trinkets. In 2011, when the shop became vacant again, the building's owner, Assicurazioni Generali, Italy's largest insurance provider, undertook a careful programme of renovation and restoration and subsequently entrusted the FAI, the Fondo Ambiente Italiano, Italy's national trust, with the management of the building on the condition that its original aspect and purpose are preserved and that it remains open to the public. The negozio is open daily from 10 a.m. until about 6.30 p.m. Entrance is around about eight euros. And if you ever find yourself in Venice, I can highly recommend paying it a visit. We've been visiting Venice for over 30 years and I've only just discovered this recently and it's certainly somewhere that we'll be going back to again. Uh, that's it for this week's video though. Thank you for watching. There's a couple more of these Venice type vlogs to come and a few other things. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified when they're posted. There are links as always in the video description down below for further information. Uh, Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.